The Ubiga Fan 2.0 is finally here. We got scene graph, we got custom quick bar inventories, we got a ton of new devices, fun little mechanics, a bunch of weapons. So let's just get into it. All right, so downtime is still going on. So I'm just going to go through uh, the, the little patch notes for just a little bit. Scene graph is now in beta. We've been waiting for scene graph for quite a while and everyone's been hyping it up as Ubiga Fan 2.0. And to be perfectly honest, it is Ubiga Fan 2.0. Scene graph will fundamentally change how people will make maps in Ubiga Fan. And if you aren't learning scene Graph, you, you probably should be. Now, I'm not going to go into depth about scene graph right now. I have a video coming out in the next two days or so going over pretty much everything you need to know about scene graph. I do have an older video about scene graph, but it's a bit outdated. So it's not, it's not that bad. You can still kind of learn a bit of it. I go into a lot more detail in this, in this new video I'm currently making. Anyways, you're probably wondering what even is scene graph? Basically, scene graph is a new foundational layer of the engine that breaks down all objects in the scene and enables you to access, modify, and control them using verse. Also, I'm just reading this. Scene graph. <laughs> brings all the objects on your island, gameplay, visuals, sounds, view effects, and so on into a single unified structure, letting you work more efficiently and build richer experiences. So imagine like, uh, right now in Fortnite Creative, you need to use devices and verse together to, you know, make something. SyncGraph basically allows us to make something that can work independently. It doesn't need anything else to work with it. It can work with things, but it doesn't actually need it. For example, if you wanted to make a moving platform, you need to get like a, you need to get a platform a prop, you need to get a first code that transforms it or a prop mover to move it around. And if you want to make more platforms, you're going to, you're going to do that every single time with every single platform. It can get very, very, very tacky on memory and also performance of the game. Scene graph, on the other hand, you can just make one single platform prefab and you can copy that platform multiple times and you can make as many platforms as you want and it's going to be very, very low tax on the memory. And imagine that, but pretty much anything. It's very, very powerful. That's basically why it's, everyone calls this UEFN 2.0 because it basically is the next step in UEFN. Here's a little example of this little fine sweep hits. This is because you can, I think you can, uh, you can sweep, you can find different hits, you can find different meshes and stuff. Basically, they're using a little at alien spaceship and then picking up little cows so you can you can detect like different things like that it's kind of cool and right now you can only use it with like imported meshes or meshes you've made but in the future you'll be able to use it with fab assets and also hopefully creative props and devices uh, but anyways Anyways, that's really cool. Next up, we go forward, right up. Uh, it's changing to left, forward, up. If you have old verse code, uh, you need to update it to this new version. Now, okay, they specify here that you don't need to change code for content for published islands. Uh, you don't need to do that, but any maps you're currently are making, uh, you need to update them to this new coordinate system. As you can see in here, it's, you know, left was Y, up was Z, forward was X. And you can go through all these docs uh, to figure out all the different, like, you know, things that do, like changing, uh, you know, you have to change, I think, UnrealEngine.com, so Special math to verse.org special math now. It's a new it's a new module. And just stuff like that. You just have to update. I, I recommend just looking through this and just seeing what you have to do. Anyways, okay, let's actually get into UEFN and let's try out the new devices. So I'm trying to launch UEFN, but for some reason it just doesn't work. <laughs> like I keep getting this error. Um alright, I got it to work. All I had to do was just verify my game files. All right, so we're in UEFN now. Um, so basically, if you, if you can probably tell already, but the toolbar has changed. I think it's all the same, but I think they've just did the look of it. So they've, they've kind of moved everything around. Okay, anyways, basically what they've added is a new mesh progress device. So uh, progress based mesh device like that. There it is right here. I can bring it through. Uh, what are you looking at? So I think this is the default, uh, default one. Continuous rate, instance, progress target, uh, visuals. Yeah, here we go. So I think these are all the different these are all the different visuals of different meshes that you can reach, I guess. You get the static mesh there. This, this is the amount it progresses when you do um, progress or begin progressing. And that's also the amount it will regress. Threshold meshes, so you can add in your own meshes for each threshold. Transition VFX, you can add your own VFX, you can add your own transition sound cue, and you can also add in your own material index. Uh, so if your mesh material has a fill amount scalar parameter, this device will update it to reflect the current fill amount. This is, this is the material index to operate on. Okay, so you have to add in a fill amount scalar parameter to your material you use. Okay, so I have an idea, okay. I need to make a custom mesh. I'm gonna do modeling and I'm just gonna make a box very quickly. There we go, nice little box right here. I don't know why I moved down. This is our box and I'm just going to make it, there we go. Then we're going to need a mesh that we can use the progress of. So what we're gonna do is to make it simple, I'm just gonna go to here, material, we're gonna make a material. This is gonna be our box. So inside our box, what we're gonna do is I'm going to just, um, probably the easiest thing is 
I can make a loading bar. Uh, let's try to do that very quickly. Linear greeting, and then we do a parameter. So we're gonna hold S, and we're gonna click, and I'm gonna make a parameter, and we're gonna call this fill amount. It has to be called fill amount. I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna put that right there. Literally, I'm just gonna make. Uh, I'm just gonna copy what they have on the documentation. That should work now. So zero. Oh, this is one actually. So yeah, so it, it will fill black. So I want this to be. I want this to be A, and this to be B. So I'll fill with blue. There we go. Perfect. Now back out of here. Uh, I'm just gonna put my box material onto our actually i'll go i'll go into our, our, our my meshes and then this is going to be empty box and then we'll make another mesh actually just going back to this i, I might actually just you see here these meshes i'm only using the material parameter to make it look different but what you should be actually doing is you should be changing the like the actual mesh itself not, not the material so for example this one it should be i don't know a cube and then on when it's halfway or in the, in the range of 50 to 100 uh, it can be like something like a, a triangle and then when it's full which is about 100 it can be something like that like a like a, like a cylinder and i'm just going to do exactly what i just said and i'm just going to set the materials of these to, to the box also it's getting very late okay i live in europe okay so it's like it's like 12 o'clock for me so if, if i'm getting quieter as i as i go on it's why then uh so what we're just gonna do next is we're gonna just click on this one which is our just because this is the one's device and then for box two we're gonna do the cylinder we're gonna do our cylinder which is uh cylinder e whatever and that should do it like that there we go so now as the progress goes higher the the actual mesh itself should change but we'll see in game oh yeah look you can change the progress audio and finish audio here okay, so we're in the game now and as you can see it's still it's the jar in in edit mode but if you go into actual game it becomes the cube and let's press this button and it looks like the material parameter is not working but it seems to be making noise uh look at that it turned to a cylinder and now it's probably a wait for it a for it there we go cylinder <laughs> i'm in a cone early actually it doesn't matter i don't know why the material parameter didn't work i should have set it up right but oh well who cares it's probably it's probably bugged or something our next thing we got is a player movement device and it seems like in this device we can actually add the players on game start priority enable during phase movement setting preset you can do turn br burn turn ballistic and we can actually change the maximum acceleration breaking friction factor reloading speed multiplier shooting speed multiplier round friction walk speed minimum maximum speed then we got jumping with jump maximum time and jump velocity and air control crouching crouch maximum walk speed sprinting maximum speed tactical sprints oh my goodness this is beautiful <laughs> now but on out movement speed and now hurdling and now hurdling original objects and auto hurdling and mentaling mentaling minimum wedge of weight oh my god and now sliding and now my maximum forward speed sliding dash duration boosted jumping There's so many different options swimming skydiving gliding energy oh my goodness this is beautiful so this is kind of the setting we had already on setting but now we can apply them per player on a player by player basis so you can do add the player, add to all players, remove from player, remove from all players. This is extremely useful. This is actually going to be very helpful for um, some, some maps out there. So yeah, <laughs> pretty cool, pretty cool device. Next up, we got the shove gameplay item. The shove item is an all new gameplay oriented item that players can equip to push another player with small force a certain distance away. Players cannot see when the when other players have shove equipped and the item requires stamina to use. Shove can be used to give a player a sneaky push to back in the combat. This is pretty fun. So it looks like they've added a new item, kind of like your pickaxe where you can just shove people i'm guessing if i just switch up shove in here i'll be able to find it it's because it's an item right here shove l1 okay actually i need to probably make a item spawner device go with it oh my god where is it again but oh, i can never find it there it is oh my goodness okay item spawner we can put our shove inside of this and i'm guessing when we're going game we can pick it up and get a shove <laughs> shove item Ow. that basically allows us to shove people we have to shove item let me try and shove this guy that's pretty fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm really lagging right now. I don't know why, but the audio might get messed up. My, uh, the audio might lag. We also got the Lawless Rift launcher, so we can shoot rifts now. Which is pretty fun. Oh, look, yeah, there he goes. Now, they've also added new hero chest device. And this is a new hero chest that we found in the chest and ammo gathering creative. And this is the first chest device with user options, events, and functions, finally. And each hero chest can be locked and unlocked on a per player or global basis and has multiple ranks that determine its loot. The hero chest also is supported by verse. 
Let me find. Okay, we're going to find the chest in Animal Gallery. Or just search a chest. There we go. Right here. There should be a new chest inside of here that basically I believe is probably. Is it this one? The C? Or is it this one? That looks. That doesn't look like it. Go chest. Oh, it is this one. So it's like there's a new chest where rank C, B, A, and S starts lock. Can you change the mesh of lock sub level? Locked label. That's kind of interesting. Is it like. There's obviously. There's finally like user events for these. So you can do like lock for instigator, unlock for instigator, lock for all players. Unlock for all players. Unopen. They should add functions to the, the old chests. Anyways, I'll check that in game in a second. So this is, this is what the super chest hero thing looks like in game. I can like, you know, open it. You can open it and get some cool loot. Which is pretty fun. Next, we got the conversation device updates. We got hide conversations, show conversations, which is a probably two events of conversation device. We now have test players now have behaviors, which is cool. Basically, if I go into on settings and I do turn on debug, at test players on game on start, so we can add in fill, we do custom. I might just I'm gonna spawn in two. And then you can we can now add test player behavior. And we can do random movements, which probably makes us just randomly move around, and we can also have follow players, so they follow the player. We also have custom test player definitions, so you can actually add in npc character definition that you've made into the into the test player which is kind of cool so you can make them do custom things test things and as you can see here uh you now have test players that can move around and i think oh god they always fall from the sky i think max test player in this world was 16. uh oh and now they can actually move around and do stuff if they you know actually where to do things now we have test players that move around anywho they go over about the fortnite discover blog and then fortnite api uh content browser and inventory updates which is kind of cool. The vice updates and fixes, so you can go through all these things. I think one of the big ones they've actually added is that the character device now has an additional 105 uh, character outfits that are from the battle passes and then crews. So if I go into here, hopefully, finally, he's there. You know who? Oh my goodness, please tell me he's there. Just... <gasps> no, no, it's not, it's not. I was hoping for, well, Agent Peely's here. Of course they got Agent Peely, bro. Where's Reaper, bro? Where's Reaper? Everyone always writes about Reaper. Let me guess, let me guess. They have Elite Agent. No. Okay, they don't. Do they have Black Knight? No, they don't. It's not all Battle Pass characters, but they've added a lot of Battle Pass characters. Do we have like Midas? Yeah, we have Midas now. That's interesting. Well, I was kind of hoping they had the Reaper, bro. Anyways, so this is pretty cool for people. I have no idea which skins are probably been added uh, off like off by heart. I gotta be honest. But anyways, you can go through here and find some cool Battle Pass. I think probably Meowsles. Maybe he's Meowsles now. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. I think what they've also added is that if you use Live Link Hub with a character device now, it actually works with sequencer so you can now live record uh character devices straight up in uvfn yeah they say and they say it um here you can now enable live link in uvfn editor and capture and record close motion capture data directly to fortnite characters which is kind of cool they've also added a bunch of new weapons like these i'm guessing these are from the new season let's stable young chunkum <laughs> okay they also added new items like the tracking visor the lawless rift launcher i was uh going through here this is a bunch of fixes and updates and everything so basically um you might have probably missed that if you go into Drawer. And if you make a where's it a user interface, I'm gonna make a widget blueprint and I'm gonna make a module dialog variant. They've added a few new cool things to uh UIs, including some a really cool view model. This is just for buttons. If you if you drag on a button now, you can actually find that you can actually change the if you look at sounds, you can change the press sound of the button finally. So if you if you have something like a custom button, you can actually change the noise of the button finally. It took forever, but they finally added it. They have water out cue as the button. A water outer cue. <laughs> whatever he wants <laughs> so yeah kind of a cool little change right there the next thing they've added i'm just gonna make a new user interface and i'm gonna make a user widget i think that's what i need to make right yeah we're gonna make a user widget and we're just gonna call it this again and we're just gonna go inside of it now, okay they've actually added a new view model which i'm gonna go for in a tutorial later uh in a few days probably after the scene graph but if you go into uh if you go into view bindings and you add a view model they've added a new view model which is for the if you look in here it's the quick bar slot view model and basically this will allow you to make your own custom inventory and I'm, I, I am going to go over them in a few days. But as you can see, like like all these new different, different things, and just and this will allow you to create your own inventories, your custom, completely custom inventories or quick bars, I should say. Inventory is a little bit different, but it's it's the quick bars. It's like how you can see all your weapons at the bottom. Not custom inventories where you can have like Minecraft inventories. It's not that. Not yet, anyways. It's your quick bar. So I want to go over that in a tutorial in a few days. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the update. I'm gonna have a scene graph tutorial and a tutorial about the quick bar the custom thing soon. Don't worry, it should be out tomorrow or the next day. I'm not sure. But we'll see. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, subscribe, use my code in the Fortnite item shop, and thank you to all the members of the channel for your continued support. Remember to watch all these videos for more of my tutorials. That's about it. So I'll see you all around.